Leaders and healers, gamers and claimers, ladies and gentlemen from around the globe, from around the universe, from around the community, welcome to the Power, Purpose, and Passion podcast. I am your host, Anthony Cheem, speaker, life coach, trainer, author, musician, singer, songwriter, friend to you, wanting to serve your greatest, deepest needs as humanly possible so you can transform, upgrade, and update your life so you can be the best version of, your, of yourself, continually growing, continually showing, continually giving, continually living your life, your best life, because this, this life, this is the only life that we have, so we might as well just live it. We have one planet. Let's take care of this planet. Let's rock this planet. Let's just shatter all these doubts and fulfill our dreams, our destiny, our purpose on this planet. So this is a, this is a show where we help you claim your, power, claim your power, clarify your purpose, and cultivate your deepest, widest passions possible so you can show up as this version of yourself and inspire others to do the exact same. Because that's what it's all about, growing and contributing the best you possible. So th thank you for joining us on the show. And we're on this wonderful TGIF. Everyone, you, everyone says, thank God it's Friday. But I say, thank God I'm free. <laughs> so uh, and, anyways, the point of the matter is we're going we're gonna to cap this week off with a great show called The Gift of Crisis. And before we get into that, I want to introduce my power partner in crime. That loves to rhyme. <laughs> Cameron Dubay from Chatham. What's going on, man? Not too much. Not too much. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Mm. Thank God I'm free. And I'm so pumped for this <laughs> gift of crisis, man. Because, I mean, we, uh, we fail to understand that challenges and problems in our life are the very things that allow us to propel ourselves forward. And so I'm really excited to hear your perspective on that. Whatever quotes you got going on let's let's hear it <laughs> you know what i want to start i want to start by with a quote from freud sigmund freud the famous psychologist and um he said this and i actually put this on my instagram today in my facebook it's uh, he says one day in retrospect one day in retrospect the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful and have you ever had the experience, you know, Cam, you can, you can kind of chime in on this too. Have you ever had the experience where you're in the experience of have a ne negative experience, um, whether it be something small, it could be something big too, uh, loss of a friend, loss of a job, feel like you have no money. Um, it could be you got diagnosed with some sort of illness, whether it be long to, uh, would it be fatal? It could be some sort of bad flu or pneumonia and you start to question. Um, it could be uh, a breakup with a girlfriend or boyfriend. Um you know, divorce of a mother and father, whatever it might be. And you're in it and you, I can tell you, you'll do anything to get out. You just don't want to experience that pain. But then years later, months later, perhaps, you you find yourself actually contemplating, looking back and saying to yourself, wow, I did. I would not have wished that on my worst enemy. I would not have wished on anybody to go through something like that. But man, I find myself giving thanks for that because I've grown so much in, in having gone through that. Yeah, I find myself giving thanks for all those things. I find myself giving thanks for even finding my mother just a few short months ago on her front part of her, you know, right, right where her entrance door is. And as, as much as that still torments me and it was emotionally traumatic, but man, she, I was there. I was there during her dying moments. I was the last person that she saw and thank God she saw her son there with her holding her hand um, and talking to her. Um, and sending her off to whatever your religious or spiritual beliefs are to heaven or to another place or just a transition from body to spirit. And, um, you know, I find myself giving thanks for my best friend dying when I was 17. I find myself giving thanks for the, the real stupid mistakes I made like where you're like, wow. And then guilt and shame arises and you're like, wow, I just did something really stupid. And you find yourself for months or years being tormented by that mistake that you made, um, but then you you learn a lesson from it and you go, wow, I, wouldn't I, I couldn't have learned that lesson unless I did that stupid mistake or made that stupid mistake. And by doing so, you've grown so much. And I was having this conversation. The reason why I want to I talk about the gift of crisis because the, the past few clients I had, we were talking about crisis and then the joy of crisis and sort of a paradox of it. But, but I, I'm, I'm going to read you something. And it was by a Polish psychologist uh, uh, in the 1950s. And they were talking about how he was studying World War II survivors. And what he discovered, he wanted to see, you know, this the mental and emotional states of these survivors. And what he said was, and, and this is this is basically what, how he kind of put it. And he said, he noticed something very surprising and amazing. A sizable uh, percentage of them believe that the wartime experiences they'd suffered, although painful indeed and indeed traumatic, had actually caused them to become better, more responsible, and yes, even happier. 
<laughs> Many described their lives before the war as if they'd been different people then, ungrateful for the uh, and unappreciated for their loved ones, lazy and consumed by petty problems, entitled to all they'd been given. After the war, they felt more confident, more sure of themselves, more grateful and unfazed by life's trivialities and petty annoyances. Wow. These are people that gone through World War II. What's the war in your life? What's the what's the what's the area of your life you're focusing on that really is not that big a deal? You know what what, what we call is you know first world problems. I was even talking to a um, I think I was talking to you or a, a couple of people and you know uh, my original mentor said you know if 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 you have problems that can be solved with money they're not real problems, right? And um and so that I had to really contemplate that for a while. I mean sure money can solve some problems sure. Um, but it doesn't solve all problems. And, um, one of the things he, he went on to say was he, he argued, this psychologist argued that fear and anxiety and sadness are not, are not necessarily always undesirable or unhelpful states of mind. Rather, they are often representative of the necessary pain of psychological growth. And this author of this book basically said, and I want to finish off with this. He said, we need, and he italics it, we need some sort of existential crisis to take an objective look at how we've been deriving meaning in our life and then consider changing course. And oftentimes it takes crisis. Oftentimes it takes trauma. Oftentimes it takes where, we, where we're faced with a, a big challenge in our life to recapture the joy of of living of being recapture ourselves re-examine our what really what it really means like if if all of a sudden living in canada someone from another country were to just take over canada let's just say go to war with canada and all of a sudden there's bombs going off and there's war there's absolute anarchy chaos everywhere would that you know would that because Amazon didn't deliver your parcel on time matter, right? Or you didn't get the right hot sauce on your taco or your, you know, the, your food didn't come out because your steak was not medium rare. It was too well done. Would all that stuff matter? The petty things that we put so much emphasis on, or, you know, uh, we woke up five minutes late or this person didn't call us, or we didn't get that many Facebook likes on our Facebook page or whatever it is that we put so much emphasis on. And oftentimes, you know, my spiritual directors told me this a long time ago, and I, it stuck with me for a very long time, and I use it in my coaching practice, is that if we put too much emphasis on who we are exteriorly, we won't know who we are interiorly. And oftentimes, it takes suffering, chaos, challenge, problems in our life to realize that the exterior, what we put so much emphasis on, on who we are exteriorly, that fades away with suffering and great love. And when we once we start to turn turn our eyes inward to who we are inwardly, then that's where we derive real meaning from our lives. And that way we can give the best of ourselves to the world. And we're free to do that. I mean, you know, if I were to ask you, I was asking a client yesterday, uh, what's the most important thing in your life? And she said, without a doubt, love. I said, then, then make sure you're living love with all of your heart. And then we started to define what love meant to her. And she basically said, then everything should be basically come out of that value of love. And everything else is just trivial. Everything else is just petty. Then if you're not living with love, receiving love, giving love in your job, giving love in your relationship, receiving it, and being a full expression of love in everything you do and everything you are, then uh, let me tell you something. All that other stuff doesn't mean much. Because what can you really take with you to death? when you die. Really, you can't take anything with you. Maybe, and people talk about legacy. I truly, I've, I've actually revisited this. I really don't care so much about my legacy because a thousand years from now, no one's going to remember me who I am. But what lives on is love, is eternal love. And that's what I feel like I've came from. And that's what I'm here to do. And then that's what's going to continue on after my death. And so what's eternal to me is just this moment here is eternal and what I do with this moment. So take your whatever challenge you're, 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 you're going through, whatever it is, turn it inward and start to examine how can I use this crisis, turn it into a gift so I grow, so I'm, I am smarter, I am wiser, I am more patient, I'm more compassionate um, and more loving at the deepest core. And I think that that's what it usually takes. Generally, it takes suffering. And at its core, when you go deep into your suffering, you get more love. That's just the way things are. That's why in my experience anyway. And I know 
uh, for many people out there that have gone through tough times who are listening to this podcast or are listening to this, um, they might go, oh, you, you, you don't know what I've been through. You're right. I don't know what you've been through. Perhaps you've been through a lot worse trauma than me, but I do know this. There's a great book out there and it's called Left to Tell. Uh, by Immaculate Illibagizo. And I've read that book probably five times to remind me once in a while, go, wow, things can turn around, can turn really bad very quickly. And this is a woman who lost, basically, she lived in Rwanda and over 1 million people were killed in 90 days. Could you imagine taking the population of Burlington, Oakville, and Mississauga and just boom, in 90 days, just wiping them out? And these are people killed unjustly because they were part of a different clan. And she lived in a... I think it's like a, a small bathroom with seven other women for 90 days in, in fears that she'd be executed. And all basically most of her family were executed. And she came out with so much love and compassion out after that. She gave the people that she gave forgiveness to the people. She confronted the person that actually murdered her family in jail and 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 said, I, I don't want to kill this person. I'm just here to say I forgive you. And 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 it just literally that act of forgiveness propelled her to this amazing spiritual loving human being that she wouldn't have arrived at unless she went through that. Now, would she have wished that on anybody? No, of course not. But that's what the card she was dealt. And as they say, you can't, you can't sometimes control the cards you're dealt, but you can't control how you play them. And how you play them is, is a complete entire, uh, is in your complete control and entirely up to you. So oftentimes I'll read that book and I'll read of, of a mate. I mean, again, I, a couple of episodes ago, uh, Cam, we talked about that girl, that 11 year old girl who got shot in the face who said, no, I'm going to school. The Taliban can't tell me. I, 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 I have a right to get an education and they shot her in the face. And then she became this prolific, amazing human being um, at 11 year old girl. That's amazing. Anyway, the point is whatever you're going through, there's a reason. And it's up to you to discover that reading, to shift the meaning and to raise your standard for how you're going to live. Because man, you'll, you might find yourself going, hey, you know what? Even though that was the toughest time of my life, wow, am I stronger? Am I wiser? Am I more, more loving? Now I might be repeating myself here, but you know, anything to add there, Cam? You know, as we as we talk about this? Yeah, uh, From it kind of seems like, it kind of seems like this is, um, how how you can see the bigger picture in things mm -hmm. you know because it really like when crisis happens or even when you mention um real things that other people have been through it allows you to see the bigger picture of your life and really see like wow love is all that matters i am going to die like i'm not my my identity my physical like material person is not going to be here forever um mm -hmm. so why waste my life building it up why might yeah. why waste my life uh pursuing things that at the end of my life it won't matter like it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's like trying to gather up all this food and you're never going to eat it <laughs> you're just kind of <laughs> building it up and then and yeah, then eventually yeah, you starve yeah. to that you're gonna you know what i mean yeah. um and also it's almost like uh like when you say live your life with love or if somebody their life is about love then it's important to like remind yourself why you're here why you're alive mm -hmm. um what yeah i ask that all the time with people like um, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Like, yes, why did yes. you wake up today? Why did you decide to be alive? Like, obviously there's some sort of motivation there. Yes. Um, and obviously for some people, they just, it's, it lies dormant. They don't know. Yes, but, yes, yes. You got um, it. But to find that out, and I'm not saying anything specifically, like I'm here to read books to children. Like that, that's just one yeah, thing yeah. that you do. Um, just generally, like you said, love, if you don't have love mm -hmm. with everything you do, then then you're not living your life on purpose and, and discard it yeah. and discard what's not serving that that highest value right exactly exactly you get rid of the things in your life that uh that are keeping you from that or that have nothing to do with it that stray you off the yes path. yes um and it definitely uh i guess it just simply allows you to each moment is important now each moment has yes. value you're not waiting for tomorrow because today yes. matters you know, it yes, kind of yes, it empowers yes, yes. the moment for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I remember the story of, was it Bob Marley and he was shot? Um, and he, they, they robbed him in his house and they shot, almost left it dead and he uh, left it be killed. And he was supposed to do a concert the next day and they had him in the hospital and he ended up doing the concert, like, like bleeding out and, and you know, and it's like, he did the concert and they asked, interviewed him after. And it was like, why would you do that? Like you could have died. He's like, you know, listen, there's so much evil in the world and they never take a break. Why should, why should I? 
like evil never takes a break. Love is gonna, I'm not gonna allow evil to determine what, what I do, even though I'm up there almost dying, struggling. But it inspired that act of inspiration, inspired and that allows you know, light up the darkness. You know, how to light up the darkness, no matter what. Fear heck does not hold a candle to love. And I know that fear has not, does not have the power to name you. Love has the power to name you. That's it. From my experience, from my gut of gut, from my heart of hearts, from my mind of minds, from my life of life, I know that love is the most powerful entity in this planet. It is, you know, I often ask people, what do you think is the engine of the universe? Destruction, fear, evil, catastrophe, and chaos? Or is it over? overwhelming, overflowing love and abundance. And I, I say, don't just answer, like, think about that for a second. Look at our earth right now. Look what it's feeding. It's feeding many animals, fish, birds, plant life, which is feeding us. The oxygen for 7 billion plus humans, plus the other trillions of animals and species that are on this planet, the food, the water, the relationships, the sun that lights up our world and it feeds us nourishment and heat and vitamin D for our bodies. What to me, it's the engine of the universe is not chaos and fear and evil. It is overflowing love, like, like this endless ocean of abundance. And it just keeps on pouring out, giving to us, seducing us back to our true nature, our true name, which is love. If you want to call it that. And, and in this moment, as you said, Cam, that's what's the most important. This, this moment, you know, uh, it was Ralph Waldo Emerson that said, write, and I'm paraphrasing, write in on your heart every day that, that this day is the best day of your life. And no man has earned any or learned anything rightly until they, have, until they know that every day is doomsday. Today is a king in disguise. You know, I, I could die right now. I mean, I was in the, I was in the car with a client. I was driving. I said, a plane could hit me right now and explode my car and I'd be dead. I'd be worm food. I'd be dust and I'd be gone. What lives on is this moment. What lives on is, is love and the universe, the, the engine of the universe is without a doubt in my belief anyway. It may not be your belief, but it is certainly mine. It is my guiding principle. And if what's, and I'm going to continue to live by that and be a part of that engine, a part of that pr process of, of giving, living, growing, showing, getting up, stepping up and living up and living it up and, and giving the best of me to this world. Because I, I, I'm one of my favorite quotes and I, I've said it before on the show. I've said it before with many clients and on if, to my audiences is that when I finally reach my end, whenever that may be, when I'm standing in front of my creator, father, mother, God, whatever you want to call this, this entity, I want to be able to look into this person's eyes, this, this, this wonderful loving human, this wonderful loving being and say, I have no more purpose or gifts left to give. I use them all up. I've used them all. And I want to be able to, and I feel, I feel, you know, if I were to die right now, would I be pretty pleased with my life? I, 100%. That's how I know I'm living my life. I, that's how I know I'm living my purpose because I know that if I were to be taken right now, my heart were to stop, I, I would be pretty pleased with my life. Can you answer that same question with that much certain, certainty? And if, if not, you have a choice. How are you going to live in this next moment, in the next hour, the next day? And to make sure you arrive, as Brendan Burchard talks about, did I live, did I love, did I matter? Make sure that the next time you, you answer those questions and you say, if I were to die today, would I be pleased? You're at least a little bit more certain of yourself. And even if you're not, you have the next moment. So um, hopefully this, this podcast uh, guided you and helped you a lot as you go into your weekend. And TGIF, thank God I'm free. You are free. You are free human being you know, with, with the gifts, the talents, with the dreams and desires, you're never given a wish without the same power to make that wish come true. Whatever it is, live your life, live your dream, live with love and, um, give your best to this world. So anything to add there, Cam? I mean, I think we covered it. What do you think? I, you know, I think we covered it and I honestly believe that this is one of the best episodes we've ever had. Oh, really? I, I do think <laughs> okay. so. I do think so. Wow. wow. Fantastic. That means a lot, man, coming from you, man. So um, thanks for sharing that, man. And and this is this is part of the reason, you know, I think what, what makes Cam and I a great power partners is that we we are so aligned with our values. We're so aligned with, we're just so giving of ourselves. We just want to give to the world. Like I wake up with like, a, it's like I wake up with a billion dollars going, all right, here's a billion dollars. Now give it all away. Just give it all away. 
And only this billion dollars is the equivalent of a billion soul dollars, love dollars. And I just want to give it all the way through podcasts, through books, through spending quality time with my family, friends, community, and giving to strangers on the street, whatever it might be. And it just, it just feel, you feel so free and alive and peaceful. So, um, Thank you for joining us. And yeah, thank you, Jessica. Uh, I agree. Really inspiring episode. And um, we're, con we're going to continue this for as long as we're going to continue this. <laughs> and until the end, if there's, if there's an end to this, episode, uh, uh, this podcast, we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to give to you guys as much as we can. So to your continued upgrade and evolution, live it up with power, purpose, and passion. May your dreams come true and you live life fully in this moment, forever, eternity. Okay, guys. Thanks. And God bless.